this fungal infection may be on the rise. Valley fever, aka coccidioidal mycosis, is already underdiagnosed, and climate change may be putting more people at risk. There are 10 to 20,000 annual cases of coccidioidal mycosis reported to the CDC, but the actual number may be 10 to 18 times higher than that. Coccidioidal mycosis, aka coxie, increases when there are swings between dry and wet weather. Rain helps the fungus multiply in soil, and the winds of dry weather help disperse these spores. California is an example of extreme weather driven by climate change. After a multi-year drought, California had a string of atmospheric rivers that brought heavy rain. The next year, California reported a record-breaking number of coxie cases. Part of the diagnostic challenge is that the symptoms and X-ray findings of coxie pneumonia are nonspecific and can easily mimic other respiratory infections. So people with coxie pneumonia are often initially treated for bacterial pneumonias. If you have a patient that's not improving with antibiotics and lives in an endemic area, consider a coxie infection. Coxie is endemic to the U.S. Southwest, but is projected to spread due to climate change. Although many who inhale coxie spores don't get sick, about 40% of infected people do develop symptoms. Disseminated coxie occurs in less than 10% of cases, and coxie meningitis in less than 1%. However, coxie meningitis has a 100% mortality rate if left untreated. As climate change puts more people at risk for coxie infections, clinicians should keep in mind this often missed condition. This article, linked in the caption, can help you learn more.